This is your Catholic Daily Journal for Monday, February the 4th, 2019. It's the feast day of St. Andrew Corsini, born in Tuscany in 1302. He was an Italian playboy like St. Francis of Assisi. He was especially disrespectful to his mother, which tormented her because she had especially consecrated the child, Andrew, to the Blessed Virgin Mary while she carried him in her womb. She confronted him one day while he was speaking rudely to her and shared a dream that she had had in which her son, Andrew, was a wolf preying on sheep. And she told him that she hoped and prayed that he would convert and get his life together. The change in the boy was sudden. The young man immediately apologized and begged forgiveness. Within the hour, he had packed up and headed to the church of Our Lady of Carmel down the road and made plans to become a Carmelite friar in Florence. Ten years later, he was ordained a priest, and after further studies in Paris, he was elected as the superior of his religious house. When the plague hit Florence in the mid-1300s, Andrew was considered by many to be a miracle worker. When the plague had finally subsided, Pope Clement VI made him a bishop. St. Andrew Corsini's life was full of extremes, going from very bad to very good, to very educated, to very penitent, to very holy, to very successful as a bishop. Immediately after his death, his tomb became a popular pilgrimage spot, and miracles were common there, which led Pope Eugene IV to name him a saint only 66 years after his death. Great rarity at the time. Today is the birthday of civil rights pioneer Rosa Parks. Born in Tuskegee in 1913, she became an icon of black equality on December the 1st, 1955 in Montgomery, Alabama. She took a seat in the whites only section of the bus. And driver James Blake ignored her because Rosa Parks was not the first African American to participate in this kind of civil disobedience. It wasn't until the whites only section was full that he asked her to move and she refused. The narrative is often put forward that, that this is a sweet little lady who couldn't make her way to the back of the bus or, or that she was taking the only free seat. Sadly, December the 1st, 1955 was nothing like that. Rosa Parks worked for the NAACP. There was plenty of room on the bus and she got on the bus planning to engage in civil disobedience. It wasn't a spontaneous situation, but a consciously crafted protest. Parks was asked to help with the protest because she was a prominent figure in the local community and she was willing to endure a long legal proceeding. Of course, that doesn't denigrate the work that she did. Like the young men in Woolworths whose nonviolent protests at the lunch counter changed both laws and hearts, Rosa Parks was inspired in her protest by a young Baptist preacher named Martin Luther King Jr., who was taking Montgomery by storm with his calls for a Christian approach to civil liberty and equality. And finally today in 2004, a young Harvard student named Mark Zuckerberg launched thefacebook.com. The site was a successor to FaceMash, a kind of proto-web app on the local Harvard intranet that allowed students to see profiles of other students with their names, photos, and residence hall. Zuckerberg's business partner in the Facebook was Edward Saverin, who put up $1,000 to match Zuckerberg's investment. Immediately, the site drew ire from other Harvard students who claimed that Zuckerberg had stolen their idea, but the Winklevoss twins would not be the last to make the case that Zuckerberg had stolen their idea and made a lot of money with it. Less than a month after the site launched, Facebook opened access to other universities in the New England area. Within the year, access was made public to anyone over the age of 13. It took three and a half years to make money on the site. Facebook's IPO in May 2012, though, was the biggest in history, and it valued the site at $104 billion. Today, Zuckerberg and the Facebook is a genuine social phenomenon. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.